Okay, everybody, welcome back. So in this section, we're going to take a look at the bass guitar. So if you remember where we left off with our drums here, um, we'll play back a little bit of the drums and then I'll play you back the bass here. Now the bass is just one single track. Right now you can see there are no, um, there are no plugins uh, turned on except for the mix tool, which is kind of just a placeholder. So let's set up our bass, shall we? So let's, let's see what we got going on with the bass here. Okay, pretty straightforward, sounds pretty good. So let's open up our uh, tape machine first. Let's get all our plugins on here. Uh, let's turn off the, let's just go to the tape machine. Let's make sure again that we're kind of hitting the sweet spot. Okay, we see we're pegging it here. We probably don't want to hit it that hard. So we're going to turn down a little bit of the input, which will in turn turn down, turn up the output. Now we can unlink that by clicking this button here. We'll see what it's doing to the virtual mix rack first. Okay, you can see that we're just, we're pegging this completely, which is, you know, again, you can do that, but I don't tend to want to hit these things too hard. Okay, a little bit better. Now we can either turn down the input on the, um, on the virtual console, or we can turn down, again, the output on the tape machine, which is what I'll typically do. So even though we turn down the input a little bit, We've also had to turn down the output because this was recorded with, with a healthy signal level here. Okay, so now we're hitting the sweet spot again. But just I try to hit up around zero dB. That's uh, that that's that's what I try to do. So it's not too bad. Um, let's take a look at our um, and I turned up the output a couple of dB, um, which I could probably turn that back down to level match the plugin. Let me turn up the volume of the bass a little bit here overall. Okay, so now let's get to our channel strip here. So again, we're gonna go on to the mic mode. We're gonna see if we're gonna to have to use this 20 dB pad or not. Let's just turn down the output for safekeeping. Okay, so now we got the level set pretty good. We're using the mic input here. We're not using the 20 dB pad, but we are, again, listening for the getting the transformer coloration. Now we're gonna start setting our compressor. So now on the bass, unlike the drums, we're gonna set the attack and release a little bit different. So again, taking a look at the way this bass looks, again, we're gonna probably go with a slow or maybe a fast attack here. We'll have to take a look here. But if you take a look at the bass, for the most part, it's pretty evenly performed, right? I mean, you have some, a little bit of spikes here, but it's not all over the place, which tells me that either the bass player is a fantastic bass player and played with the utmost precision as far as velocity goes, or it was probably compressed a little on the way in, which is typical, um, which is, you know, again, we have some spikes here, but it's not bad. It's a pretty even performance. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a very, again, a light amount of compression. We're not going to slam it. Uh, we'll probably use... Um, a slow attack on this because we don't need to clamp down on it too hard.
So again, we're doing about 3 dB of compression here. We're using kind of a, a medium fast release here. Again, uh, we're just we're just kind of just kind of you know squeezing it a little bit. We're not over compressing it. I'm doing about a four to one ratio here, and I'm just dialing the threshold into taste. Now for EQ, we're going to try to bring out the fingers a little bit more. Although you can hear the fingers here, we're going to try to bring up a little bit, or right around 700 hertz or so. So we're going to put the EQ in. Uh, we'll do it after the compressor this time around, so we don't squash that boost. Um, and we're going to look for somewhere around 7, 800. We'll over, over exaggerate it just to see if we can find where the fingers come out a little more. Okay, so you can hear before the channel strip, before I have that little boost in the compression, it kind of falls a little flat. It's a little bit warmer, a little thicker sounding. You can hear it get a little brighter, a little bit more present when I bring the channel strip in. Listen for that. And that's really due to the boost here, which is going to help us cut through the mix of these heavy guitars, which we're going to hear in the next section. Okay, so that brings out the brightness. It kind of tightens it up a little bit, makes it a little more present, which is what we want. So the bass is pretty straightforward. We're not doing a whole lot here again. We're only doing a little bit of a boost at around 650, 700 hertz. And we're only doing about a 3 dB boost to kind of bring out the fingers, a little bit more of the attack on the string. And then we're compressing about 3 dB with kind of a medium fast uh, release, a slow attack, uh, about a four to one ratio, three to dB of compression, just to kind of even it out a little bit. We'll also use a little more coloration a little later on in this series where maybe we'll use something like an LA-2A after this just to give it a little bit more interesting feel. But that's pretty much it for the bass. I mean, the bass is pretty straightforward on this one. Now, what you could also do, which um, I'll just show you another thing that we can do that I'll do sometimes on mixes, and maybe we'll do it here just as demonstration. I probably won't use this track in the final mix at the end. But what we can also do is we want to add a little bit of grit, a little bit of distortion to our bass to kind of blend it in. That'll help pop, make it pop a little more. What we can do is we can take our bass and instead of adding a distortion plugin, we can just copy it. We could do a, a what is it? A duplicate track complete, which will also um, duplicate all the inserts. Okay, so if we do bass two here, and if I open this up now, you'll see I have the same plugins here as on bass one. That's why you do complete, so you get all the the, the um, you get all the plugins. And then what I'll do is I'll call this bass grit. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll mute the first bass, I'll just, just the second bass now, which is just an absolute duplicate of the first, just a copy and a, a copy and a paste here, okay? Um, and what we'll do is we'll just, we'll Okay, absolute duplicate. And then what I might do is I might add a little bit of a distortion on this, um, something like the just the stock, uh, I think they call this the red light distortion here, which is kind of nice. Uh, you can also use things like a, a decapitator by Sound Toys, but just to keep this easy, maybe after the fact, we'll add a little bit of a distortion and we'll, 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 we'll do it in a subtle way. Um, Let's see, we can just, you know, just dirty maybe. And what I'm gonna do now is I wanna turn down the output on this in the drive, because you don't want this thing to get super loud. So I'm gonna turn down the bass, I'm gonna creep this in. Sometimes it'll, it'll get super loud and kind of blow up your speakers there. You wanna be careful. 100% mix, uh, this thing has, we'll just do like a, um, like a hard tube kind of a setting. Um, and then we'll just see what happens.
though on this soft tooth setting, it's a little more subtle. So we got a little bit of a distortion. It doesn't sound very good on its own. And then what we can do is blend it with the original bass and just bring it into taste and tuck it underneath. So that's also going to make the bass a lot more present. So it gets it a little bit more clear. And again, now you hear more of the fingers, you hear more of the top end. So the distortion is actually bringing out some of the upper frequencies that are not there uh, in the original recording, which again will help it cut through these other electric guitars, which we'll see in the next section. So again, when I mute this distort, this bass grit track, you'll see how much darker it sounds. So I'm going to start with it on and take it away. And again, I'm just blending it in, just kind of tucking it in underneath. So real simple, real simple technique to help you get your bass to cut where it doesn't sound like it's distorted. It just sounds like it pops through the mix. Again, this is just a stock plug-in from PreSonus from the Studio One collection. Any of your DAWs will have something similar, or you can buy some third-party plugins like uh, Sound Toys Decapitator is a real good one. Um, there's also Waves makes a bunch of stomp boxes for their guitar emulations, like uh, an Ibanez Tube Screamer and things like that. You could even use one. I don't have any of those, or I'd show it to you. You can actually use one of those as well. Any kind of a distortion or drive or tube saturation, something like that, that just gives it a little bit of grit will help make that bass pop. And then you could decide in the mix whether you want to use it or not you know I don't always use it but it's always a good idea to have it and just give it a little bit of taste and again as we'll see in the next section when we get to the, distort the distorted heavy electric guitars um, it'll help that bass cut a little bit more so that's one way to get the bass to cut through the mix without having to turn it up so loud where you get too much bottom end and too much mud okay um, so now that we got that let's just quickly before we end this section take a look at our bass bus and just make sure we're not slamming our tape machine or our console too hard want to make sure here okay yes okay this bass so both of these tracks are going to the bass bus okay so that, that's important Okay, so after I, after I complete each section of the, you know, we did the drums, we're now doing the bass. I'm always going back and checking my master bus, checking my bus, my bass bus. What you just saw there was checking the master bus. Just again, to make sure that we're not slamming anything, that we're getting some nice healthy signal into these plugins. So we're mixing into these plugins. So we're not, we're not dropping all these master bus plugins after the fact. We're doing it during the course of the mix like we did in the setup section, okay? So it's always a good idea for you to check out and make sure that as you're going through your different sets of instruments, and you're mixing and you're working with these things that you're double checking your your bus double check your master bus so that is the bass guitar again pretty straightforward pretty simple um adding a grit track will help you know get that thing to cut a little bit more whether we choose to use it or not in the final mix is still to be determined but anytime again you have a song which has distorted heavy distorted guitars like we do in this uh song uh getting the bass to cut uh, without sounding muddy is always a challenge and one of the techniques that I use a lot is again adding this bass grit or bass distortion track adding a ch just any old cheap distortion plug-in getting a little bit of healthy distortion sounds kind of cr kind of crappy on its own but when you tuck it in underneath the original bass track it helps bring it to life and gets it to cut so come come on back for the next section where we're now going to take a look at our three electric guitars